What is going on, guys? Thanks for watching today's episode. Appreciate you all being here. Hello, hello, hello. Thank you guys for being here. Uh, we hit 2,000 subs officially, which is awesome. Um, thank you guys for all the support. I really appreciate uh, everybody watching and you know liking the videos and everything. It has made a big difference in uh, how I look at this game and how I'm kind of approaching YouTube now these days. And I just wanted to say thank you for getting me to 2,000 subs and we're on the road next to get to 5,000. So. See if you can help me do that. But uh, today's video is all about the Hakosuka. And we're gonna jump into um, riding the bank here and how I kind of practice doing that for some tips and tricks for you guys. And then also at the end of the video, we're gonna jump in, show you my full tune on this car. Um, it has the stock motor in it still. And uh, we'll give you a breakdown on that as well. So in order to practice um, drift, you know, up in the banks and I've had a lot of people ask, how do you keep it up against the wall instead of driving down the hill? Um, there's a lot of tuning stuff that goes into that, um, but the other part is, you know, keeping your RPMs up. Um, you know, the lower RPMs when you maybe shift up to a gear that's a little too long for the application, um, that'll kind of send you down the hill. If you are just on the limiter, um, if you have enough wheel speed, it will keep you up on the bank. Um, and that's, again, just a fine tuning thing with the transmission. Now, this car is, like I said, it's got the factory engine on it and the tune on it I have right now is more meant for semi-slick tires. Um, you get the more grip, more speed, um, but in this car, because it is so light with the semi-slicks on it, it takes a lot of commitment. Um, this car, you really have to huck it into the corner and hold on for dear life because if you let off throttle or uh, make any adjustments, they can happen really fast when you have a semi-slick on. Um, the, the tune still works great on sport tires as well, but uh, just something to keep in mind if you're having trouble and it's straightening out too much on you or something like that to maybe go down to a sport tire instead of a semi-slick. I wanted to show you the available body kits for the Hakosuka. Um, I currently run the R&T body kit, but they also have a missile, a CBW, and then uh, a SC Ute, which makes it like a little pickup truck, which is kind of cool. Um, I did try to drift with the Ute uh, body kit, but um, I just for some reason like the original look of the Hakosuka more. It's the original Skyline. I mean, you just can't mess with it too much. So um, I have this thing upgraded to Pro Drift 3. My tune is Brogue Auto House. You can find that in the tuning store um, in the game there. And uh, we're gonna run through it. So spring size, you can see I have this 10.7 uh, 10, 10 centimeters. The stiffness is all the way maxed out as well as the sway bar. I do the sway bar um, all the way maxed out on most of my cars. A Little bit of positive toe in the front, negative five camber. Um, full caster, 14 degrees at 67% Ackerman. And if you want more front grip, you can just lower that Ackerman number and um, you'll get some more control out of the front steering. Um, a lot of the rebounds and um, bumps and whatnot are set pretty low on this car so that it can move around quite a bit. Um, negative one camber in the rear, uh, positive 11 degrees of tow. No sway bar in the rear and that'll allow the car to kind of body roll a little bit to sink in and get some more grip on um, bank turns and stuff. At least that's how it seems to be. So um, we're running 19 285s in the front, or sorry, 265s, and uh, 19 265s in the rear as well. Now, sometimes I run a larger rear tire, but in this situation with running a semi-slick, um, you don't wanna go with too big of a tire or it's gonna be really hard to control. I do have the engine maxed all the way out, um, which gives it about 781 horsepower. The differential coefficient is at a 0.63. That's pretty standard for what I run on most of my cars. Um, 385 overall gear ratio. And then you can see fifth gear is a one to one, 1 1.0 ratio. I try to shoot for that with all my tunes that my final gear is a one to one ratio. Um, that's how most uh, real life drift cars are in my opinion, um, as far as what I know. And 
uh, I think it's a good way to kind of adjust your overall gear ratio, knowing that your fifth gear is a one-to-one. -one. Now the axis widths, um, I had, you know, negative one, negative 0.5. It, it really should be zero. Um, I think before when I had it sitting a little lower, I had to bring the wheels in for that. Um, that's it for the tune. We're going to jump out and just do come some kind of spirited driving. Um, you guys can check out kind of how it performs. I know you saw some of that in the beginning of the video already, but um, it's always nice to just kind of go out and huck it into some corners, um, show you that if you try to send it in backwards, you can still recover it, which I'm going to do right here and flick it in, um, drop to a third gear, and then kick the clutch. I went a little too far on that one, hit the grass, which sent my back end out too far. Um, but it's a great way. It still gave me the mega backwards. But um, if you guys are wondering how to send a backy in, you pretty much go into a corner with a good amount of speed, flick it in as hard as possible, drop a gear, and, and pop the clutch. And that's going to kind of send your car into a backwards motion. Um, when you drop the clutch, it'll kind of drive you out of it into the corner. And um, that's how you get it backwards. So that's going to do it for uh, today's video, guys. Feel free to continue uh, watching the driving here as we roll around uh, the practice track here when you're training. But otherwise, thanks for coming. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.